Om Shanti. We will revise today's object Murli. There was once a big and majestic tree and this tree was so beautiful it had big branches outstretching into the sky flowers you flowers fruits were blooming and many butterflies used to come to that tree birds used to come to that tree under the shade of that tree travelers used to come and take rest and uh, this majestic tree which was there it was so happy always singing always dancing always loving everyone it so happened that once a small child came there and that small child started playing there and this tree grew a sort of affection for that child it was a very small child and the child used to play so the tree fell in love with that child and it would bend down it would offer its fruits its flowers to that small child the child would pick fruits the child would pluck the flowers so this went on and the love of that tree for that small child went on increasing and that child also enjoyed the child grew then it would make with its leaf a crown of around his uh, head and he would call himself jungle king so the affection the love of that tree increased for that child when the tree when the child would not come to that tree the tree was always waiting for that child oh come 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 it would call that child always the child grew and then child got busy in its studies and when the child became a teenager his visits were far and few between so the but the tree kept on waiting for that child one it so happened that the child now a teenager was passing by that road and the tree was so happy to see him his old friend who had not come to him for a very long time so it called that child come 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 and play with me come and embrace me the child says what i will do with you i have studies to do i have so many other things to do so but the tree still keeps on calling that child the child goes away the child grows up and then one day again that person now is passing from that by the side of that tree and the child and the tree says come and rest under me come and play with me see the butterflies are blooming the flowers are blooming but this child is now a different person the tree represents love love is calling love wants to share child is representing ego ego doesn't want to go to those places where there is nothing to be gained so the child says i need money now can you provide me money the tree says yes i can give you money why you need money but you come and play with me he says no i have no time for you i need money now the child the tree says go and pick up all my fruits and you can sell them and get money so the child climbs on the tree he picks up the fruits even unripe one breaking some of the twigs and some of the branches and goes away even without looking looking back even without saying a single word of thank but tree is very happy then days rolled into weeks and weeks rolled into years and the child doesn't come 
So, but the tree is always waiting. And one day it so happens that now that child has become an adult. And once that person is passing by that tree, the, ch- the tree is again so happy. It tells that person, come now, again play with me, I am waiting for you, come, climb on me. He said, I have no time for this childhood activities now. I am a grown up now. And what you can give me, you can't give me anything. He says, what you want? The person says, I need house now. Can you give me house? The tree says, yes, I can give you house. Go and cut my branches and you will get the house. You make your house. So immediately the child, the person goes, brings an axe and cuts that tree and makes a house. Many years passed. There's no coming back. But the tree is always waiting, always waiting for his its beloved. So one day that child, now old man, is going by that tree and the child is again elated. The tree is again elated and the tree calls that child, come, 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 I am waiting for you, come embrace me, come play with me, I am waiting for you. But now the tree is just a trunk remaining. The person says, what you can give me now? I am going, I want to earn money. I want to, I am going to a distant place and I need a boat. Can you make, give me any boat? The tree says, yes, cut my trunk and you can make a boat. So the child, the person becomes very happy and he cuts that trunk and now only a stump remains, a small stump. But still that tree is waiting for that child. Love waits. It is always buried still what has happened to that child who is now an adult and now a grown up or an old person. But still, all the thoughts of that tree, all feelings, all emotions, everything for just that one person. So that is what is love is. Love waits, love shares, love gives responsibility to fulfill the love. Preet the key, read. That's what Baba wants. You have to fulfill the responsibility of love. You say that, or we say that, we love God, but are we fulfilling the responsibility of that love? We say that we love Him too much. We say that we have given up the world, we have renounced the world, and we have come here. But, is that the fulfillment of the responsibility of love? Baba has given the example of moth and flame. Moths come and they burn into the flame. The ultimate sacrifice of love. And that is the love, the true love. That's what Baba is saying today. The flames, the moths have come to the flame. The flame is eternal. The moths are eternal. And the spiritual love is also eternal. Imperishable love. Moths have for the flame and flame has for the love. And one who fulfills this responsibility of love attains everything. Those who do not fulfill this responsibility of love do not attain anything. So how to fulfill this responsibility of love? In today's Murli, Baba has told total 12 points scattered all over the Murli. Those 12 points we can take as 12 garlands. Recently Baba has talked about garland, necklace and rosary. So every Amrit Vela for next one week, see that, or imagine, or visualize, or experience that Baba is garlanding me with these twelve different types of garlands. What are those different types of garlands? Baba says that if you do these twelve things, you are fulfilling the responsibility of love. Otherwise, you are not fulfilling the responsibility of love. Not everyone who cometh and saith, Lord, Lord, but he that doeth the will of my Father shall enter the kingdom of heaven. That's what Bible says. It's not that simply you keep on chanting his name. It's not that simply you keep on calling out. No. He who he who follows the dictates of my Father shall enter the kingdom of heaven. So what are those twelve garlands? What are those 12 things? What are those 
different necklaces what are those different rosaries we can say and if we do that baba says they are very very easy don't say that once you go to your place you will become busy and you will forget no these are so easy things that everybody knows how to do these things baba never gives us very difficult or hard tasks he wants our life to be celebration he wants our life to be a sort of festival the entire confluence age is a sort of festival it's an occasion of rejoicing it's not about renouncing renouncing it's about rejoicing it's not about fasting it's about feasting baba doesn't tell us to fast baba tells us to rejoice to dance to sing to happy to be merry all the time so the first thing the first point for fulfilling this responsibility of love preet ki reet nibhana is to sing four types of songs baba has told in this morley what are the songs you need to for singing you don't need much practice anybody can sing because these songs are not for others this is for oneself we are singing for ourselves our songs are not arising out of to gain something they are arising post realization this is not a pre realization life this is post realization life we have got something that is why we are singing we are not singing we are not calling out like devotees or bhaktas because they want something we do not want anything we have got everything and from that from the depth of heart the songs are rising from our hearts of hearts so what are those four types of songs first the song of praise of the father we praise him we praise his glory we praise his love we praise his qualities we praise everything which is associated with him the first song is the song of praise of father second song is the song of praise of elevated life what were we and now what we have become so we sing the praise of this life itself people sulk people are gloomy they are sullen they are unhappy in doldrums but we are rejoicing here we are elated such life of exhilaration such a life of songs that is what is our life so second song is the song of praise of this elevated life third song is of gyan baba has given us such a elevated gyan so this song is devoted to and we are singing this song right from the amrit vela throughout the day the song of the praise of gyan and fourth song of all attainments yesterday we carried out an activity we wrote so many attainments we have got something so these are the four types of songs so first is song second is dance second way to fulfill this responsibility of love is dance two types of dance baba has talked about one the dance of feet and second dance of hands we whole day we are karma yogi whatever we are doing that is a different pose of this dance we are dancing with our feet we are dancing with our hands and that is what is the life of karma yogi is to do service with these hands is an act of dance dance of happiness we are dancing with our feet wherever we go that is an act of dance in the same moodly while talking with teachers baba has said that you have been given eyes just to see him you have been received you have received this ear to hear baba you have been given feet so that you walk in his step otherwise these eyes have no other purpose you have no business to see this world the world is dead you have to see only him you have to only hear him so second is dancing third way of fulfilling the responsibility of love is hearing what do we hear we hear that sweet music that abhyakt music the music which takes you beyond the sound this dancing and this singing is not usual dancing and singing it's a dancing coming out from the soul 
it's a pouring of the soul outpour of the soul because the soul is flooded with happiness and that is why singing dancing and third is hearing what are we hearing we are listening to his sweet music saz what is that saz beloved children sweet children long lost and now found children this is the saz this is the sweet music this is the melody that we keep on hearing so that is the third method what is the fourth method baba has said that when you dance a lot when you sing a lot when you hear a lot what happens you get tired and you sleep but here sleeping has got a absolutely different meaning there when they sleep they get detached from the body here when you sleep you get detached from your physical organs you are sleeping in the lap of remembrance of god so to sleep means to become bodiless to sleep means it's a sort of spiritual drill that is the fourth method of fulfilling the responsibility of love fifth realizing self realization baba has said you attain to self realization that is why you are never depressed people are depressed why because they feel lonely because they do not have god as their supreme companion you have god as your supreme companion that is why you can never become depressed this year's who team is depression let's talk about 35 crore people around the globe are depressed that's the who figure 35 crore people around the globe are living in a state of depression so baba said you can never become depressed you forget this saying now depression 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 even if you say that baba said about tiredness or unhappiness it means you have it but later on he immediately totally changed the sentence and he said that to say means to renounce it so realization self realization this is a life of enlightenment we are enlightened masters we are here we have got enlightenment now we have to enlighten others so realization that is the fifth sixth what is the sixth method of fulfilling the responsibility of love humility to think oneself as an instrument to let go of this i consciousness i am a teacher i have done this i have done that once you do this if you bring the consciousness of i two three things happen what your happiness is gone your intoxication is gone when you bring this consciousness of i service becomes slack you are on the world stage you are spiritual servers at the same time you are instrument teachers baba is talking with foreign teachers and he's saying to them that the only reason that your service is getting slack is because this i consciousness always have the humility the more the humility the more the feeling of being an instrument the more the service will grow so to have the humility baba often says that he is karan karavan har we are just karan karan har he is making us do everything so where from this ego why this i consciousness if he goes away we will fall down so the sixth method or way or garland which is putting round our neck is humility the feeling of being an instrument seventh self transformation if you transform yourself what will happen you can transform any soul who is staying at home you can transform any soul you can transform the whole world but that process of transformation of the world begins with self transformation that's why you should have attention to your self transformation this is the seventh method of fulfilling the responsibility of love simply to keep on saying that we love you we love you we love you and we do not follow or we do not transform ourselves the same sanskaras are still going on 
then this is not fulfillment of his love we are probably doing self deception he will not accept our love he wants self transformation and he wants humility these are the sixth and seventh method of fulfilling the responsibility of love eighth free from obstacle all the obstacles and remover of obstacle vigna vinashak and nirvigna this is the eighth method if still so many obstacles are coming and we are unable to remove them it means that we are not fully intoxicated in this spiritual knowledge it means that we are still not intoxicated with his love how can obstacle come when you are in a stage of intoxication probably your intoxication is much of a lower degree and that is why ninth eighth method is free from obstacles leap frog in english there is a very good word leap frogging leap frogging is a game where a child drops down and another child puts his hand on his back and jumps on another side that is known as leap frogging that means like a frog you overcome all the obstacles so this can be taken as a, a topic for the class leap frogging in brahmin life dr meda okay. next uh, friday next friday leap frogging in brahmin life that means you overcome all the obstacles just as children you have understood the game a one child drops down another child keeps his hand on his back and jumps on that side yeah so that is known as that is known as leap frogging so all the obstacles obstacles may come but then you don't have to stop you have to destroy them you are remover of all the obstacles you are free from all the obstacles nirvigna stage is quite higher stage but before that vigna vinashak nirvigna means no obstacles are coming but if they come you are removing them so that is why the eighth method of fulfilling the responsibility of love is vigna vinashak and nirvigna ninth method to remain satisfied to remain content and make others content we i am a jewel of satisfaction of contentment and i make others contented that is what brahmin life is all about if you are still sulking if you are still wailing and whining if you are still raving and ranting that is not the sign of brahmin life brahmin life means a life of fulfillment in english there is a very good word plenitude that word has come from plenty the life of plenitude plenitude means everything is fulfilled you don't need anything now so this is that life of plenitude so the ninth method of fulfilling the responsibility of love is to be satisfied to be content and to make others content baba said claim this certificate take this certificate if you take this certificate you will claim baba's heart throne so important this certificate is 10th method picnic how picnic with baba dada he is ready to assume any form for you he is father he is friend he is your teacher and no one except you can get this opportunity you have got the chance you can enjoy him he you can have picnic with him all the time so to have picnic with him to celebrate with him to dance with him to rejoice with him what a beautiful life this is we need not to go the last sunday murli baba had talked about limited entertainment baba is providing you unlimited entertainment here he is the one who gives you massage mental and physical as well he is the one who will provide you all sorts of entertainment why you are going to all those worldly entertainments those cheap entertainments those sensual entertainments all those entertainment who deplete which depletes all your energy so that is why the 10th method is 
to celebrate with him, to have picnic with him all the time. Eleventh method, lines of fortune. Right from the Amrit Vela, start counting your fortune. Baba has talked about line of fortune. Four different words Baba has used for that. This line of fortune should be constant. This line of fortune should be unbroken. This line of fortune should be clear. And this line of fortune should be long. If it breaks, and if, even if you mend it, then it is not the same. It is not the same. And look at your fortune, Baba. I said, right from the Amrit Vela, you have spiritual meeting with Baba. Throughout the day, you have been given eyes to see Him. You have been given these ears to hear Him. You have been given these feet so that you walk in His step. Whatever you do, this is actually you are making fortune. Even when you are relating knowledge to somebody, in the same Murli Baba had some other place said, different people have been given different service. Some are given services to offer bhog, some are to, some are preparing bhog, some are bringing souls to Madhuban, some are relating knowledge to them. But Baba considers everyone as a server. You are on the world stage. Your every breath, your every thought, you are hero actor. You are on the stage all the time. Such elevated roles, such elevated parts you are playing. So, eleventh method is counting our fortune. Make a list of our fortune. What are the different fortunes Baba has given me? To stay in Madhuvan, it's such a great fortune. People are thirsty and hungry to come here. They just want to stay here oh, one night, just one night. What a fortune to be here. What a fortune to be in this land of Tapasya. What a fortune to be, to gather here like this and to discuss knowledge. This is all different fortunes that we have got. Right from the morning, from dawn till dusk, we are flooded with fortune. So, count your fortune. Count your attainment. Line of fortune should never break. It should always remain constant. It should be very long. You should not have small line. It should be very long fortune and very, very clear, spashed. Bhagya ki rekha. This line of fortune. And twelfth method. Baba is backbone. Baba is our backbone. Baba has used this word in two senses. First he said, now Baba has no work. That's why he has become backbone. And he reveals, you have to reveal him. I am not concerned with the world, Baba said. You are concerned with the world. I am concerned only with my children. I am concerned with you. You are concerned with the world. So I am just a backbone. What I do, I have just four different duties which are left. One, I see. Second, I meet you. Third, I have heart-to-heart -heart conversation with you. And fourth, I have only these four different duties are left now. Four, just to make you move along. Otherwise, I have no work. But then again he said, backbone in one more sense. He said that Baba has become backbone. If suppose Baba is not your backbone, you might get tired. So make him your backbone. Make him your support, your bulwark. He is the be all and end all of our life. He is the main support, the underpinnings of this building. So no one else can be your support. No human being is your support. No place is your support. No situation is your support. Nor any human being's love is your support. Baba is our backbone. Baba has used the word backbone, spinal cord. He and he alone and none else. So what are the methods of fulfilling the responsibility of love? First is to sing. Second is to dance. Third is to hear. Fourth is to sleep. Fifth is to realize. Sixth is to to be humble. Seventh is to seventh is self transformation. Eighth is free of obstacles. Free from all the obstacles and remover of our obstacles. Ninth is 
contentment. Churn on each and every topic today, whole day. While sitting in yoga, imagine that Baba is garlanding me with each and every garland. These are the different types of garland. Garland of contentment, garland of remover of obstacles, garland of self-transformation, garland of humility, realization. You are realized souls. This is your post-realization life, post-enlightenment life. You are in this world not for yourself, now you are for others. You are masters. You have to make others into the masters. Then this picnic. Are we having picnic with Babdada every day? This is the question to be asked. Do I find him as my friend, as my father? Whatever, whichever form you want to have, Baba is ready to assume that form in this confluence age. So have picnic with him. Eleventh is fortune, lines of fortune. It should be unbroken. It should be constant. It should be long and it should be very, very clear. And twelfth is to make him our backbone. No human beings is my support. None. I cannot, I don't, I don't have any expectations from this worldly people. Because if I keep expectations, I will come to sorrow. Because they can never fulfill my expectations, because they are limited beings. Soul is unlimited. How can unlimited be fulfilled by limited? So this is all Baba wants and Baba is calling. This is, if you are doing all the twelve things, it means you are loving Baba. Otherwise, you are not loving Him. Otherwise, you are not fulfilling the responsibility of love. To fulfill the responsibility of love is to attain everything. Not to fulfill the responsibility of love is not to attain every, anything. So, let's attain everything. Let's have everything. This is what we have to do. So, this is in short about today's Murli. Listen to this Murli again. Okay. Churn it, think over it, mull over it, contemplate over it, meditate over it, have self-reflection. Go deeper into this murli and find out Yeah, revelation. That we told in backbone. Backbone only this point comes here. Yeah. So, we are instrument soul and we are spiritual servers. Never to forget this. We are instrument soul and we are spiritual servers. We are those moths. We are those moths. And the glory of the moths lies in Fana. The ultimate sacrifice. Recently we had done a class on Valentine's Day. My true Valentine where in ancient Arabic literature they describe seven different stages of love. First is hub, that is attraction. Second is uns, uns, un, uns, 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 that is the Urdu word, uns, that means infatuation. Third is ishq, that is love. Fourth is akidat. You start worshipping reverence and then venerance or a lot of reverence for that soul which is known as ibadat. So, sixth is junoon, obsession. You are completely obsessed with that person and last is fana, death. You die for that person. These are the seven shades of love described in ancient Arabic literature of love and they are even true today. For his love, it starts with attraction, it goes to infatuation, it goes to love. Reverence, worship, reverence and then worship and, and worship and then you get obsessed, junoon and at last you die for him. That is the destiny of the moth. And that is to fulfill the responsibility of his love. Om Shanti.